talk about strong musician. Okay. All right. Thank you for introduction and uh, thank you Sangil for thank I thank Sangil for giving me a chance to uh, give a talk here. And today I'm gonna present uh, some graph property called I mean property of graph classes called strong L D shiner property on the class of quarter graphs and some related topics. So, but there is some listing of the settings, so I'll <laughs> do it like this. So, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I keep going. So, this LD-Shiner property thing. Uh, I guess we should wait, right? Something wrong? Yeah, so. type properties and I introduce my main result our main result and uh, give some proof sketch <coughs> and I will conclude with some open problems oh by the way this work is joint work with uh, Andrea Thompson and Gina Kim and Minky Kim okay so this LB Shiner property uh, belongs to the topic of Ramsey theory and the central objects of Ramsey theory are something called homogeneous vertex set, which means either independent set or uh, vertices consisting of independent set or click in a given graph. So, by the way, if you feel any uh, ambiguity or uh, on the notation or any contents, then please interrupt me and ask questions. So I say a click or independent set, uh, simply just simply by homogeneous subset, and the classical Ramsey theory says if my graph is big enough, then it contains a big enough homogeneous subset, and the quantitative version of Ramsey theorem says if I have a graph on n vertices then either it contains a click or independent set of sides log n over 2. And this function log n is asymptotically optimal because uh, every random graph, a random graph uh, does not contain the homogeneous subset on 2 times log n vertices with high probability. So in general, this uh, bound on Ramsey theorem is optimal, uh, asymptotically optimal. But if I have a graph classes, uh, graphs with more structures, then usually they have much bigger homogeneous set. For example, if G is a perfect graph, meaning that all its induced of graphs has uh, the cling number as big as its chromatic number, then oh, this n is the number of vertices of G, then my perfect every perfect graph contains a homogeneous subset of square root of n, which is uh, substantially bigger than this log n. And Erdős and Heiner conjecture that uh, in any reason in every reasonable uh, graph class, it, their members contain a much bigger homogeneous subset than 
size than log size. So, okay, this is notation. This inequality sign means uh, H is an induced subgraph of another graph G. And I say a graph G is H free if that graph does not contain H as induced subgraph. Also, this is some mild condition. Uh, uh, in this talk, I will consider a graph classes only in, only with uh, hereditary, hereditary property, meaning that my graph class is closed under taking induced subgraph. And the conjecture of L.D. Shiner says, um, if you forbid some fixed graph and collect every graph with uh, uh, ever. if you fix uh, any graph H and collect every H free graphs, then each graph on n vertices contains a homogeneous subset of sides uh, n to the some constant, where this constant only depends on my choice of graph H. So it says. Um, as in the case of uh, perfect graphs, if I forbid a graph as an induced subgraph, then every graph should contain a polynomial size homogeneous subset. But this conjecture turns out to be uh, quite difficult, by the way. So I will say my graph class G has the L.D. Shiner property if it satisfies the conclusion of L.D. Shiner conjecture. So if there's that. Oh. Um, if there's a constant, let's say my graph in the class on n vertices contains homogeneous subset of size n to the epsilon. And I say a graph H has the L.D. Shiner property if, if, if H free graphs have the L.D. Shiner property. And here is the list of every graphs that are known to be satisfy L.D. Shiner property. So if, if H has uh, order less than or equal to 4, then this is quite small and every H3 graph has nice structure. And but when but for even for graphs of order 5, it is uh, some graphs of order 5 are very recently proved to satisfy early China property. For example, this Bull graph is nothing but graph on five vertices, which consists of a triangle and two additional edges. And these are uh, non basic uh, graphs with LD Shiner property. And the other way to const the other kinds of graphs are uh, those graphs constructed replacing a vertex by another graph where this H1 and H2 satisfy L.D. Shiner property. And this replacement means, so here is my graph H one and for example this let me say this vertex is V and I have another graph for example H2 with L D China property and the replacement means I delete this vertex V and replace the vertex by this graph and the previous vertex had uh, had uh, 
uh, was adjacent to some vertex, then draw a complete uh, draw a complete bipartite graph between this new graph and the previous neighbors. Okay, this is the definition of replacement and. So, uh, what is H three as a subgraph or induced subgraph? Ah, uh, as induced subgraph. <coughs> okay, and it is even known. It is even it even remains open that uh, whether the path on five vertices has the Erdős-Einar property or not. I think this is the last graph of order five, uh, which is not determined yet. So this Erdős-Einar conjecture is in general hard to solve. And for the rest of graph classes, there are some partial result rather than the polynomial side. So taking low, this Erdős Heiner conjecture says H3 graphs has uh, the size of uh, homogeneous of size exponential of some constant times log of n. And in the paper they conjectured uh, Erdős and Heiner themselves proved that they can at least find homogeneous sets of size uh, exponential of square root of n instead a uh, square root of log n instead of log n and in early this year there was a breakthrough on this general bound so these four, author, four authors uh, could uh, manage to add this additional multiplicate term which is log of log n Okay, so far these are uh, the known results on graph classes forbidding, <coughs> or forbidding a single graph. And the next natural question is, what happens if you give more and more structures on your graph class? For example, what, ha what happens if you exclude, say, two graphs, three graphs, or so even some families of graphs. So here is the notation. So I have a graph class, calligraphic gauge, and I say my graph class is H3 if um, my graph does not contain any member of uh, this calligraphic gauge as induced subgraph. And it is conjectured that uh, for, ev for every given graph H, if you additionally forbid the complement of that graph, then it satisfies the early channel property. <coughs> mm. But the, in general, this conjecture, this conjecture remains uh, wide open, but I think the most general result on this this conjecture is when you forbid the for forest and its complement, then those uh, those graphs satisfy the additional property. Oh, sorry, I hear you. Yes. Okay. So oh. if we take H as a K two, just a single H, then in this. It has no edge and it also has no independence of its size too. Uh, how can it? Oh, work? then it means uh, the graph is the graph has order one. So yes. Ah. Then you take homogeneous subset of size one. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. This and conjecture is a weaker uh, original one, right? Yeah, weaker than the original one. But this weaker conjecture even remains open. And surprisingly, uh, to my best knowledge, this is uh, almost all result 
on forbidding a pair of graphs. Okay, so we dig more and we start to forbid more and more graphs. Whose conjecture is that? Oh, that I don't know. Oh, by, by the way, oh, so far I introduced some uh, results on this LD Shiner thing. And one remark is also oh, I. So taking log I, this LD Shiner conjecture uh, have this kind of formulation e to the some constant times log n. And if you don't mind too much of, about this optimal constant, then indeed you can, uh, it suffices to prove the conjecture in this way. So this is the original LD Shiner conjecture which has the existence of homogeneous subsets. And instead of finding homogeneous subsets, it suffices to find a polynomial size perfect graph as induced subgraph. So you remember that at the beginning I said perfect graphs on n vertices has uh, homogeneous set square, size square root of n. So this only gives some homogeneous set on n to the epsilon over 2 vertices which is still positive. And indeed, most known uh, results on this LD Shiner conjecture, or some partial result, uh, it, uh, and the result uh, is solved in, given in this setting, finding a huge perfect subgraph. And also, so here we have a graph result for forbidding, forbidding two subgraphs. But it turns out that oh, once you have some result on <coughs> a graph classes, uh, if you forbid more than one graph class, then the cl class itself starts to satisfy much stronger combinatorial property. Not, not much stronger, but stronger combinatorial <coughs> property than this LD Shiner, which indeed gives the existence of perfect software. And now I will introduce what the, what the property is. Uh, so before giving the definition, so this, this is uh, an analog a bipartite version of homogeneous set. So for a given pair of vertex sets, v, v1 and v2, uh, a graph uh, is a bi-click between those two vertices, uh, those two sets, if there's the graph has all possible edges between them. And it is called anti-complete if there's no edge between them. And this pair of vertex subsets, which is either complete or anti-complete, this is called pure pair, which is the exactly the bipartite version of homogeneous subset. So if you say if they form again as an induced subgraph or? Oh, they do not have to be induced. But uh, I don't know what, what happens inside v1 and v2, but between them, they are either complete or empty. OK, and this is the promised con stronger condition, which is called strong LD Shiner property. So LD Shiner property says my graph class has polynomial size homogeneous subset, and strong LD Shiner property says my graph class has linear size pure pair with this constant, positive constant C. Okay, this is uh, 
one line explanation and, and as I said uh, it is not hard to show that this strong LD shiner implies LD shiner property and the way of proof uh, one proof is that if I can show if my if I have strong LD shiner property then I can build a polynomial size a perfect induced subgraph. This is what I mentioned right before. And first, uh, and as I said, uh, if a If I forbid the forest and the complement of the forest, then it has the LD shiner property, but it also satisfies this stronger condition. Mm. Um, but if you forbid uh, a single graph, then for most of graphs, uh, these H free graphs do not satisfy this stronger property. This can be shown by some, by some, uh, by considering some sparse random graphs. Okay, and these are some <coughs> graph classes uh, which has strong early China properties. So the first line is what I just mentioned, and. This P4 is the path on four vertices, and if you think of its complement, then the complement of P4 is itself. So P4 free graphs also satisfy the strong area shiner. And it can be also shown that quarter graphs, which means uh, every uh, cycle of length at least four has a chord also have this strong LT shiner. And now I introduce uh, more graph classes with strong LT shiner. And these are uh, the, the graph classes which are, which are represented as intersection graphs of certain object, usually geometry. And what does, so what does the intersection graph mean? So if I have a family of objects, then the intersection graph on that family is a graph having vertices, uh, having the family as vertices, and two members has an edge if and only if they intersect. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the definition of strong area shadow property again? Is that Every induced subgraph has a large a linear size pure pair, or just no. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, it says every member. Has every member of the family, and the family is downward. Yeah. Every. Fa yeah. Every family is hereditary, uh, closed okay. under yeah. taking induced. So what is benefit of intersection graphs? Well, so if I consider some uh, intersection graphs of some geometric objects, then because of some of some geometric nature, uh, it has uh, quite much forbidden into subgraphs. So we can expect that those intersection graphs behave better than other graph classes defined in graph theoretical terms. So for example, interval graphs, which are intersection graphs of intervals on the line, have strong early shiner. And as one generalization, I uh, first <coughs> I fix a tree and consider a collection of subtrees of the tree. In the interval graphs, this tree uh, corresponds to just a long path. 
then these intersection graphs of subtrees satisfy strong edge shiner. And indeed, this class of graphs is nothing but exactly quarter graph because of this 50 years old theorem by Gabriel. When you say subtree, do you so oh. when you have only one vertex intersection, do you say they are adjacent or yeah, the intersection graph intersection graphs of edge set or vertex set? Oh let me say vertex set. That's okay. Mm. Okay and the other what, what, what about circular arc graphs? Circular arc graphs. I think uh, Yeah, they obviously have, uh, have strong edge shiner because I think they belong to one of these two graph classes. <laughs> 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 anyway, this, these are other generalizations of intervals. So line segments are uh, the image of uh, just uh, uh, straight lines on the plane, and more generally, if the intersection graphs of convex sets in the plane satisfy this strong LD shine property. And in other direction, uh, some sets called semi-algebraic sets, uh, which are defined by the, the point sets satisfying some finite Boolean combination of polynomial inequalities satisfy the strong edge shiner. Here, the constant complexity means uh, the dimension, no, dimension or the number of inequalities, etc. Oh, and in the title, I said strong edge shiner property on coder graphs, and it is not very hard to Proof color that color graphs have strong edge shiner because uh, it is already known that convex sets in the plane have that property, and these color graphs uh, actually can be realized <coughs> as intersection graphs of convex sets in the plane. But so far, there are uh, lots of uh, results on strong LD China, but for almost of them, there were no known optimal constants, which is the size of pure pair. And what we determined is the right constant on the strong LD China property of quarter graphs which is exactly 2 over 9. And a simpler argument shows that in interval graphs it has size, it has constant, it satisfies LG, strong LG China with constant 1 over 4. And I will briefly sketch the proof later. And any questions so far? Uh, is there a reason they do uh, convex sets in the plane and line segments in the plane? Is it possible or hard to show? I mean, are they interested in generalizing that to higher dimensions, or is it is for some reason not? Uh, not do you mean possible? why I stick to uh, sets in dimension two? Uh, why reason? did the previous authors who considered convex sets in dimension two? Yeah, there's oh. two. There's two bounds. Oh, because in dimension three. Uh, you can generate every graph as intersection graphs of convex sets in dimension 3. So if I change this number 2 to 3, then that intersection graphs is indeed the collection of them, the class of all graphs. It does not have this nice property. OK, and one interesting is, uh, Oh, by the way, so uh, I said a strong LD shiner is much higher, uh, uh, it's stronger than LD shiner, 
And here are some graph classes guaranteeing that it is really uh, strict. For example, uh, the class of comparable comparability and incom incom incompar comparability graphs, which are defined from post sets, do not have uh, the strong edge shiner. And the graph classes called string graphs and the familiar perfect graphs contain those incomparability incom graphs. So this, those two superclasses also do not have strong LD shine. By the way, so the string graphs are intersection graphs of continuous images of intervals. So line segments were so line segments are straight segments and those strings can have uh, many intersections. So it is uh, it can not well behave. So. Oh, so this is mm. what I mentioned just now. Okay, by the way, so those intersection graphs of geometric objects, uh, which, turns, uh, which are known to have strong LD shiner, indeed satisfies somewhat stronger property than strong LD shiner. So, for comparison, here is the original uh, the definition of strong LD shiner. And I define something called colorful LD shiner property. So in strong LD shiner, the condition is the existence of any pure pair <coughs> of linear size. But in colorful version, I want to find a linear size pure pair given any vertex partition of my graph into two parts. So it means uh, I have a graph and I color the vertices in with two colors in any way. Then, then th in every color, every such coloring, I can always find a pure pair with uh, one part in one, one part in each color class. And if you forget about the color, then obviously this colorful condition implies this strong edge shine. Okay, and here are examples showing this colorful energy china is strictly stronger. So, color graphs and do not have set uh, this colorful energy china and this superclass of color graphs also do not have strong energy china, a uh, colorful energy china. But there are some intersection graphs <coughs> which satisfy colorful LED shiner. And indeed, our uh, motivation on this research started from this colorful LED shiner property of intersection graphs of geometry objects. So, interval graphs and these core graphs are not geometric. Not the geometry, but anyway, it has colorful energy shiner, and this intersection of semi-algebraic graphs, uh, semi-algebraic sets with constant complexity also has this colorful property. And I said, quarter graphs don't have colorful energy shiner, but interval graphs has colorful energy shiner. And in between those two graph classes, there are several, uh, there are many uh, intermediate graph classes having colorful energy shiner. And those color classes are uh, derived by fixing some complexity, where here the complexity is given by the number of leaps in the subtree. So remember, Coder graphs are exactly intersection graphs of subtrees. And if I control 
the complexity, then it says colorful error to shine. Do you mean subtrees of tree with a constant many leaves? Yeah, subtrees of, say, trees with, say, k leaves. So the. Okay here, <laughs> okay, here is uh, a precise definition. So fix, a, fix an integer k, ah, okay. then, and then I fix a tree with having k leaves, which are the vertices of degree 1. Then think of uh, every possible intersection graphs that comes from uh, subtrees of that tree. And I collect every such intersection graphs over every tree with k leaves, then that family I denote by t sub k. Then interval graphs are intersections of lines, so it is exactly t sub 2. And this, we have this inclusion. And if you take all un uh, union over all k, then, then it is exactly quarter graphs. And what I mean is, this red classes, except quarter graphs, have the colorful Erdős-Hein property. And again, for those graph class classes, uh, we determined uh, here asymptotically optimal constant, depending on, depending only on the number of leaves. Okay, so far I introduce our main result, and is there any question before going in? What about the only order graph? Are they contained in any PK? Oh. oh, so I don't know what strong or quad strong quad graph strong is. Strong quad graphs, quad graph with some free, some free graph, some free quad graph. What is some? Some is some free, independent set, and you put yeah. For each independent, each vertex independent set, you add the two edges consecutively. Here is a click, and you put this this edge um. this way. So this is sun. Uh -huh. oh, well, I I have no idea. Top of my head, so let's dis discuss more after. So Top and oh, yeah, yeah. Are there some results about a uh, family of bounded PC dimension? Oh, that's a very nice question. So, uh, but uh, mm, let me think. So, indeed, in the set system with bounded VC dimension, I don't remember any result. But for grab classes with a bounded VC dimension, and here the VC dimension is the dimension of the collection of neighbors, then it is known to do not satisfy strong error design. It is uh, a bit general class than one can think, which is quite surprising. Okay, I start with this simple statement saying that every interval graph uh, can, from every interval graph I can uh, put, I can pick one, two subsets of one quarter, and which is, which form a pure pair. So first I have a family of intervals, which are on the real, real line, and for every real number x, I define those three numbers, or three families. And one family so one family is um, uh, those intervals which lies on the left of this, this x. And the middle family are intervals which contain the, this point x. And the, the last family is our intervals on 
the right side. Then you, you see that uh, those three families form a partition of my original family. So the size of their sum is exactly n. And <coughs> we can perturb each interval by a little bit so that uh, if I start L of x from minus infinity and increase, then it increases uh, one by one. And I reach, uh, at some points, n over 4. Oh, by the way, I, I don't mind uh, the div divisibility or so let me ignore some ceiling or floor function functions which are indeed necessary. But OK, fit. Pick, pick this function x. Then the sum of this c of x and r of x is at least 3 over 4 times n. So either c of x uh, is at least n half, or r of x is 1 quarter. But in this case, it means uh, those intervals containing point x form a clique in the intersection graph. So you just divide that clique into exact, uh, two equal parts, then you have a pure pair of order n quarter on each side. So, and the other case, those intervals that lie on the left of x and intervals on the right of x, they are disjoint. So by those two conditions, you also have a pure pair, which is by click on the complement of the intersection graph. So you can understand the proof in this way. So if I don't have a pure pair of this, the desired size, then each point on the real line does not cover many intervals. So the rest of uh, the rest of members are split into some balanced way in a nice in some good point. And this and this spirit is the starting point of this result on coder graphs. And as I said, coder graphs are exactly intersection graphs of uh, subtrees. And by using some perturbation and some kinds of general position arguments, I can always assume that. Uh, every tree in my family has maximum degree 3. When it is 2, then it's the set of intervals. So. Mm -hmm. so I fix a tree of degree three, uh, maximum degree 3, and I have a family of subtrees of that tree. And this is what I want to find. I want to find uh, this, those two big disjoint subfamilies, which is uh, where every colorful pair intersects, or they don't intersect. And uh, so this middle family counts the number of members that contain the point x and in the proof of quarter graph this f of f sub v uh, will take the same role as the function c of x and assume i don't have that big pure pair then it means that this this family f sub v the size of f sub v is bounded by 4 over 9n. For every vertex in my in my ambient tree. And uh, what I do in the rest of proof is 
uh, because of this condition uh, because of this condition if I remove this vertex V then the ambient tree becomes uh, disconnected and the rest of members of my family is divided uh, falls into one of those components and first uh, I'll I search a good vertex such that after removing the vertex uh, my the rest of family is divided into uh, some equal say some equal way this is not uh, not equally but um, the size has the size is different by a factor of two so uh, I remove this vertex then because of this maximal degree condition I have at most uh, three components which I denote by T1, T2, T3 and this F sub 1, F sub 2, F sub 3 those are exactly uh, the rest of family which is strictly contained in each part okay so this Fi of V uh, takes the role of this L of X and R of X in the interval proof. Interval graph proof. proof. Okay, now <laughs> there are some uh, bunches of new families, but let me start. So, so I found a nice point uh, such that after I removing it, uh, the rest of trees are distributed uh, so quite equally then okay I have the point and every uh, every branch say uh, which is the component after I deleting V uh, contains at least 1 over 9 of my original family and I take I take I consider this ver vertex V as my root and take in every branch take a vertex which is a farthest from this root such that uh, this region uh, which are separated from this root by the vertex gamma of this vertex contains um, at least one over nine of all. There exists such a point because of uh, my choice of this root V. This condition means I took a farthest point. Hmm. Okay, and after taking this W123 in each branch, I introduce two more subfamilies. So there is a unique path from uh, this separation point, uh, this root V to W1, and let sigma1. The, the members of uh, uh, those trees which does not intersect V but intersect with this path from V to W1 so So those those epsilon belongs to 
the Stanley F1 of V, uh, Fi of V, and this uh, delta one is the rest of members of F1 V. So those are trees, which. Uh, <coughs> which does not belong to neither of this part and it does not touch this path from V to W. Okay, so for each branch, I introduced those three subfamilies. And I look for the intersection condition intersection relation between those new new those new families and what for example one observation is that this family F one of we uh, which is strictly contained in this branch is disjoint with um, this gamma 2 and gamma 3 from the other two branches and I said this gamma contains um, at least 1 over 9 of the whole family so the union of those two contains at least 2 over 9 of the whole family It means that mm, uh, the rest of trees in my family should touch. For example, in this branch, I have delta 2 somewhere here and delta 3 somewhere here. And you look at every gamma and delta, uh, if you pick every two. <coughs> two subfamilies, then they do not overlap, so we can find some pure pair in the comp likely in the complement. And I have lots of subfamilies, such subfamilies, and because of uh, some description I mentioned earlier, it gives it makes the size of these families quite large, and by distributing these families into uh, equal parts can uh, equal parts I can uh, find a pure pair of size 2 over 9 ok this is uh, an explanation of um, color for air designer but because I don't have much time I will uh, only I will, I will very briefly explain. And this theorem, first, it is easy when uh, k equals 2, which, which is the case of integral graphs. And we apply induction on, the, on, on k, which is the number of leaves. And by the way, the proof is uh, a bit easier to, uh, the theorem is a bit easier to proof when my ambient tree is a subdivision of star for so for subdivision of star i prove the theorem and here the star has the center vertex v and in general case uh, this center vertex v is Uh, the, the role of this center vertex uh, is done by something called the trunk of the tree. And this trunk is the minimal subtree that contains all vertices of degree 3. So if you remove the trunk, then you, the left, what was left are just leaves. So if you shrink this, into one point, then you have a subdivision of star and you do induction. Okay. So, th 
this is uh, this is one very general question. So I introduced a three LG Shiner type property. Uh, so the original LG Shiner property is conjectured to be equi equivalent with uh, every non-trivial hereditary gra graph class. And on the other extreme, the strongest one, colorful LG Shiner property, it is known to be equivalent with uh, some regularity conditions called, called zero one regularity. But for the middle one, the strong LG Shiner property, mm, well, there are some char characterizations of graph classes which are defined by forbidding finitely many graphs, induced graphs. But in general, I, in my best knowledge, there is no characterization of or even conjectured one for this strong LG China. So my question is, what is uh, a characterization of this strong LG China? And so, so far I explained everything on just graphs, but you can think of every property, uh, uh, generalization of every, each property to say hypergraphs. And here is one, genera one generalization that I want to look for. So we have, come, we look at Convex sets in the plane has strong LD shiner. And can I extend this property into three uniform hypergraphs in this way? So my conjecture is for every family of convex sets in R2, I can pick three subfamilies of linear size such that uh, every rainbow triple from those three families intersect or every such rainbow triple do not intersect. <coughs> okay, so this is the last page of my slide and thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yeah. How are the intersection graph of the DQ? DQ? You mean mm, the product uh, of that, the that, that document, uh, some kind of boxes? Yeah, boxes. Yeah. Is it uh, oh, so they are semi-algebraic sets, so they have some color for early channel. Uh, uh. <coughs> Does it give I some qualitative result? I mean, they don't um, give some explicit okay. boundary for the C? Okay, so in those semi-algebraic sets, I didn't check very carefully, but the proof gives a constant with uh, a little tower on the complexity, something like uh, 1 over 2 to, two to the maybe one more floor, k when k is complexity. Semi-algebraic sets, but this is for uh, general semi-algebraic sets. But I I'm quite sure that in D cubes you can uh, for boxes you can have much better. I think once we had shown that if there are x parallel boxes, then it is even linear in. Something like one over uh, constant times d when d is the dimension of boxes. Yeah. Uh, is there a reason why the bound in the strong Erdos final uh, conjecture is linear and not polynomial? Like the uh, uh, okay, so.
So indeed, by click, uh, it turns out that usually it is much much easier to find a by click of the same size, by click than homogeneous set if we fix the size. And I think even it is known that for every H, there is this. Um, there exists pure pair of size. Every hereditary graph class, except the class of all graphs, because it has uh, it has some this polynomial polynomial size pure here. So that's why this strong edge shiner sticks to this linear size. Do you know something about string graphs? Oh, string graphs. So, uh, string graphs. String graphs uh, has L D shiner, but no strong L D shiner. This is the result by uh, Istvan Tomon. I don't exactly remember this, is, but it is very recent result. There are some generalizations where we change uh, what are we searching for, for example, uh. paths or cycle. Oh, in that way, I have. Uh, no idea. The only one is it's quite sure. hard. No, I mean this is looking for perfect in the subgraph. This is indeed equivalent. Yeah, I think yeah. I know that in some extreme problems you want to find some fixed graph or something but uh, I don't have quite general thing top of my head